Okay. I believe we are live. So, uh, intentions, distractions. My intentions are to have a quick call. Uh, I don't believe that there are any updates this week on the simulator, front end or back end, uh, but I'll leave space for that. And of course, we can take a little hack session on the um, Medium blog post if uh, and see where that's at if we want to. Um, or, you know, at the end, if there's something that anyone wants to talk about or work on or look over, uh, I, hey, we're here and we're all really cool. So let's, let's hang out and hack on something. Um, and I'll pass it to Lauren. Hey, um, yeah, my intentions for the call are, well, if, if we want to do a hack session, part two of the blog post is like, pretty much ready to be hacked up by everybody else. Like Vitor and I kind of worked on it yesterday. Um, yeah, so it's, it's like at a good place and I don't have any distractions and I'll pass it to Vitor. Yeah, my intentions are to, you know, maybe hit the hammer and have this ready to launch the part two. And yeah, I don't have any distraction. I'm gonna pass to Marco. Thank you. Uh, hi everybody, my intention is just to see your beautiful faces. Uh, hang out a little bit with you, that's all. Uh, no distractions, pass it on to Chui. If if you can talk, Chui. You're there? Uh, yeah, Chui? Um, intentions for yeah. today, yeah. Also, uh, catch up. Uh, now that Victor is here, try to uh, understand uh, params a little better. And no distractions today. Um, yep, that's it. I'll pass it back to Griff. I think you're muted, Griff. Sorry, I'm a little distracted by just refilling my cup of coffee. But let's just double check the board and uh, do a sanity check, make sure that no one uh, actually like made an issue saying, hey, what's wrong with your, your stuff? Uh, so let's see. Share screen. But I can't imagine that there's anything here. Okay, so there's a dependency new issue. Cool. <laughs> Um, write blog posts, working on that, uh, make a blog post. Oh yeah, quick video walking through the simulator. Uh, is that going to be part of part two for the blog post? Oh, Vitor, you're muted. I, I was muted. I think that, that's the idea to pass through after the triples, the three parts are, are on. Okay. So we wouldn't put it in the blog post. It would be like after. Yeah. You can even uh, keep it maybe as backlog because, yeah, when you can do this after. Cool. Uh, and then the rest, finish results screen, that's got to be done. Yeah, this is done. It's fucking epic CAD CAD results. Great. Cool. Then, um, then let's let's uh, power through, and let's maybe just go into the blog post hack sesh. Uh, who wants to take it on? Yeah, that sounds good. I just sent a link to the post in the chat, and I'm just going through it right now. Um, Vitor did some edits last night before I looked at it. So I'm just kind of like going through them and accepting them. Um, but yeah, if, if anybody wants to like do some QA review, it would be yeah. awesome. And like, I don't know, if you have any better ideas for memes, I made all the memes myself so far, so. <laughs> and yeah, and yeah, you know, ideas are awesome. And also like I did the diagrams and if you guys, if there's something that doesn't make much sense, there's another clear in the diagrams, it would be nice to have some feedback as well. Cool. Well, uh, okay. So part one, part one is done, right? So maybe we can just remove this from the, 
Oh my God, lots of memes, this is awesome. We can remove part one. I It's like actually not up to date in the doc anymore because I did a lot of edits in Medium. Cool, so let's just say, maybe maybe add a link to the Medium here. Mm -hmm. I can do that right now. Cool, so let's hack guys. Uh, feel free to open the doc, it's in the chat and we can just review, read it through and make some comments. But just part two, part three is not done yet. So if you get to the end of part two, stop. <laughs> oh, great. So this is gonna be posted by Vitor. Mm -hmm. Vitor, do you know if you have publishing rights on the Common Stack blog? I think I gave it to you, but. He does. Uh, you give it to him at the same time as me. Sorry. Well, of course. Oh, and one thing that I was wondering is that uh, I work with the guys on tech education and maybe if it would be okay to send them like some ideas and feedbacks because they know the, well, the idea of teaching CAD and just get sure that all the, the terms are properly stated. Definitely, if they would, if they'd be willing to take the time to look at it, oh my God, that'd be amazing. Hey, Vitor, quick question. Uh, Timestamps and states, is there a way you can kind of draw a chart similar to ones that you have below that kind of visualize those timestamps and states somehow? Yeah. Um, like blocks. And then like, yeah. you know, each time step is a, is a day and then like goes on and on and on and like three years, that's number of days or something. So it's like the reader gets a visualization of like, this is a timestamp and these are the states and this is what happens like here. Yeah. Um, Kirka has a good chart on that that I can use as an inspiration. Just let me try to find it. Just get sure that that's the idea. Hi. Um, Sorry for the late. Well, uh, oh. Marco, I sent on the. Hey, I'm gonna send on the. Hey, Marco. Hi. I'm gonna send on the chat a image, a chart that they do if there is something like that. Merlin, we're just uh, reviewing the part two of the blog post, taking this time to read it and and discuss. Okay. So, but mostly just reading and making comments. Oh, okay. Uh, do you have the link or ah, it's in the chat? No. Yes. Uh, no. <laughs> um, yes. Uh, do you not see it in the chat? No, 
can't see it. I think I can't see the, the link posted before I... I'll send it to you on Telegram. Okay, cool. I, I think you already sent me. <laughs> yeah, it is the same link, but it's cool. It's nice to be spoon fed links. Now you have it again, close. Cool, thank you. Did we remove um, affinities that were smaller than a certain amount? Was that something that we ended up doing to optimize things? 
No, like, we could do, but we, we did not because. Uh, so, so currently, each proposal node has an affinity for every. Sorry, each participant node has an affinity for every proposal node. Yeah, but we yeah that's the point. Like we don't need to state it. Uh, that like we have we can state that the participants can have, but necessarily we need to say that always have because we can change it later. So. Well, then we should just say that. Actually, this is a room for optimization. We can say that in this blog post, right? Because, but currently, every participant has an has an assigned affinity for every proposal. Yeah, but th these not necessarily improve the performance. Like we tried, and it doesn't improve that much. So, like, it's a way to do because when you have like everyone has affinity to everyone, but uh, it happens because the distribution makes that really small number of uh, participants have higher proposals. So because of the stochastic distribution that you're using, uh, the random distribution that you're using, you need a lot of uh, a lot of points because you need a lot of points to have a few ones to have be high, and then you're considering mostly the, only the high ones. So like it's basically the same thing in performance wise. But okay. I don't know how to say this. Well, you just said it very eloquently, uh, actually. So, but I maybe, yeah, we can leave it out. But currently, every participant has an opinion on every proposal. Yeah. Cool. And then, like, it has a really low, like, one participant has a really low uh, affinity to almost all the proposals. And... Uh, high affinity with small number of proposals and then like this high affinity is what matters so yeah. at the end it's kind of the same thing what do you think about getting rid of the word participant and instead saying token holder we can, we can change but... all the flow diagrams <laughs> yeah because we do a distinction between hatchers and regular participants and if you say token holder, a hatcher and a participant, they are both token holders, but they are like, in practice, it's it just divesting, but you have a, a, a difference in sentiment as well and like in ownership. But I mean, in everywhere, like changing a participant to token holder everywhere. Mm -hmm. Because I just, it's like a participant, okay, was, you know, you, I feel like I'm reading it and I just gloss over, okay, I'm participant, but I don't really think about it. Whereas if I'm like token holder, oh, wait, we're modeling a token economy, you know, kind of like brings it back in people's minds that we're, this could be used to model your token economy. Makes sense. Yeah, and even if people, if there's someone that doesn't care and is not engaged at all, but just having tokens for speculation it is a token holder but not necessarily like a participant in the general way general sense makes sense let's see what else how many of these things does it have to change <laughs> no worry it's fast i can do it okay but then, like, then we would need to have a distinction between like hatchers and token holders. Like, we need we have, need a distinction at least to illustrate the difference between like people getting in by the hatch and by the after the initialization of the bunny curve. So, it makes sense to keep like a distinction between hatcher and token holder. Well, part hatchers are also participants, right? Yeah, I they mean, are. They are. For most of these things. However, however, it was being distinguished before is probably how it should be continued to be distinguished. Yeah, because it, it, there is a diagram that is pretty, pretty illustrative. There's like ways people get into the, uh, I think it, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's at the beginning. Uh, not the beginning, but yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, like the- Sorry to interrupt the, you. Sorry to interrupt you. We also like in the simulator. We also have the labeled participants, and you have yeah. to choose the number of participants. 
and you have to and we communicate everywhere participants so we we say we choose the number of hatchers don't we or or yeah but there is somewhere i think that we mentioned participants a couple of times i don't know maybe in the help sections or stuff like that so code is participants as well but i don't like uh. yeah and yeah i i, I kind of like participants more over the token holders it's like more general um so yeah it's just my my feedback on that but i guess i feel like people will read it when they see token holders people will read this and be like oh so I could simulate my token economy and simulate behavior of token holders. That's that's my, my main thought here, but I'm okay to be outvoted for sure. Changing should be like, you know, have consensus, not uh, not just be willy nilly. Mm, yeah, like I, I, I think what you, you're saying makes sense, but I'm not sure if that's the best way to do because like in a lot of refactoring, maybe when you explain, like when you explain the participants, you can say, state, state it, like say that participants are essentially token holders or something like that. Yeah, every participant holds tokens in the commons. Yeah, but in, in the chart, even the charts, like uh, you gotta mint tokens and burn, like for X thing, you need to burn your tokens and forgetting you gotta mint tokens. I think probably it, it's, it's not explicit saying that you're a token holder, but the messaging isn't there.
So one of the things that's coming up for me is like, I kind of, I, in some ways I love the saving the world vibe, but in other ways I'm like, wait, but actually it's just that radical exchange. So it's like an opportunity to shill radical exchange. Um, that's missed. I don't know. What do you guys think? Do we keep the, guess what? We're saving the world or do we go with, well, radical exchange by, you know, radical exchange saves the world, but actually this proposal is like to pay for pizza at a meetup. I think it's okay if we kind of still radical exchange because if we still them more in the article, then they'll still the article more and then we'll get more like focus and attention on it anyways. Yeah, that makes sense. And you already like have your final score for saving the word part. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Also, this article needs a title that's better than part three setup. So as you're reading it, keep in mind, like, what do you want to call it? Zoomed out view, bird's eye view, overview. Hello. And then we want to just scale back the negative mod as we scaled it back to five, I think, to something really broad and big. Save so we'll just focus on the fact that radical exchange brings people from all these different parts of society together to agree on things. And that meant part of the whole world. Danny, I, I don't know if anyone else can, probably not. We couldn't hear, understand a word. I mean, well, we it would get one word out of every seven. Sorry, Danny. Um. I have um, a question on the graph, uh, the participant states. Um, there's a little asterisk and uh, written after all the vested tokens are unlocked, uh, but it's for it's written for the regular participant and not the actual. I I'm not correct. sure. Uh, so you're correct. I just uh, inverted them, and I forgot yeah. to, to change the. the okay. Comment. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for the. Because uh, I, I I was confused. Uh, <laughs> oh, so yeah, yeah. I correct. was wondering. Okay, uh, so I I didn't understand the how it no. works. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm gonna fix it. No problem.
I I actually don't know when a project fails. Is it like, does it go through and calculate each participant's affinity for the, for that proposal and then reduces their sentiment or yeah. Yeah. Based on affinity. Yeah. And, and if someone has a low affinity for a project that's completed, they also get a low sentiment boost. Well, this can be implemented, but it is not right now. Like you basically have a maybe kind of a threshold. So like if you if you're more interested in than something, you get affected, and if you're lower, you know, because the distribution right now is whether you have a high affinity or a very low affinity. So uh, if you have a if you're really interested, you can have almost the same. Everyone that is really interested is going to have almost the same drop, and people that are not that don't have much affinity will not be affected. I'm going to play Danny's voice message. Hello, guys. This is um, my repeat of what I attempted to say in the chat in response to Griff's question about how the narrative is, is quite vague, talking about just saving the world instead of going into any specifics about radical exchange. Um, and I want to uh, reflect on that deeply that that was one of the greatest challenges that I had in thinning down the narrative is that we ended up eliminating or eradicating um, the benefits of radical exchange itself in favor of keeping it very simple. Um, so I'm stoked to hear that we could go back on that a little bit. Um, and I want to give a little bit of input as to why I selected radical exchange. And it's because in order to accelerate rapid change all around the world, we need to be able to proliferate ideas and act upon them swiftly. And Radical Exchange is a unique organization that reaches across all different aspects of society, and it's a global organization. So it works, it brings together scholars, academics, politicians, activists, artists, organizers, uh, conservatives, radicals, all of the different people that is the intention of radical exchange. So in order to rapidly accelerate change and get these ideas out into the world and to change and save the world, uh, we need to work with an organization that has the broadest reach. So the concepts uh, of radical exchange are important, but also the chemistry and makeup of the organization itself is what I wanted to bring to the table on that. Thank you.
Yeah, and originally it was just for meetup groups, but maybe we kind of expand that to like, I, I don't think anywhere in our in our um, stuff do, are we like, oh, this is for meetup groups with Radical Exchange. We can just say, oh, it's the Radical Exchange Commons in general, right? There's no place in our content where we're like, this is for meetup groups. No, okay, cool.
Guys, I have to drop now. I have another call coming. Same. This yeah. article is great, guys. This yeah. looks really cool. This is super cool. Bye bye. Thanks, Thanks for your help. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think we can end it early for everyone. I would just say overall from maybe we'll just do a really quick like 30 second feedback round. Uh, overall, I think we just need to shill our uh, radical exchange a little bit more. And uh, other than that, this looks really good and really explains a lot of interesting concepts. Uh, I'll pass to Marco if he has a, a thought. Yeah, no, no, no other extra thoughts. Just uh, with plus one on everything you said, that's all. And I pass it on to Lauren. Um, yeah, thank you for, for helping. Um, you can go through again and try to add more stuff about radical exchange. Pass it to uh, Chewy. Um, well, uh, thanks for uh, letting me uh, help and contribute with this. It also helped me uh, get get some more stuff. And, and, and yeah, it's always good to uh, contribute with this. And I'll pass it to Merlin. Yeah, uh, for me, the, the article is like, perfect and just uh, the little graph to to change um and uh, but Peter, you know about it and uh, really great job lauren uh, this is really cool and uh, excited to uh, i'm waiting for the real release so thank you and uh, danny is not here anymore so so <laughs> nobody to to to, to pass. Do you have any last? Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, <we're> <laughs> oh, yeah, so I passed to Vitor. <laughs> sorry. Oh, I'm excited to watch it, and I, and I also think that just it's fine tunes, and I'm gonna fix that uh, diagram. But I think that's really interesting the way that we stated everything. I think that's it. Cool. Thanks, guys, and I'll see you next Thank week. You.